Meg asks, a uh, long time listener, first time caller. Hi, Meg. Nice to meet you. Uh, anyone planning on taking on Cisco's new cert path? That is Meg's question. So, Tommy, you just raised your hand. Um, you were looking at CCI Enterprise, I guess you said in the chat. Yeah, um, I've mostly done VMware certifications. I've danced around. I think I took ICND one, and then work and life kept me busy and employed and doing other things. And I never circled around and took ICND two. So I never even got my CCNA. Um, I've done as difficult things as the CCIE before, and I have a lot of respect for everyone who's went and got one. Um, and there, there's a rigor to that and I feel I always wanted to go after CCI data center but there were things in that learning track that I was like well that's useless I am not gonna I looked at everything in the blueprint I'm like I am not learning this 40 percent of garbage like I know so I'm hoping I haven't seen the blueprint for enterprise but I'm kind of hoping that the entire set of it um, is something that I can be fairly relevant and it's gonna stick around for a while. Now, if I end up putting many hundreds of hours into ACI 4.0 or something like that, I'm sure I might be back here in a year crying, but we'll, we'll see, but I'm not really sure, but I, I see value in it and the folks who design those learning programs, um, you know, they put a lot of work into it. So I, I think it'll be good for me because I, I need some rounding out in a few areas. And uh, as I've drifted in and out of networking, I feel like I've skipped a few things. So if you, you poke at me, you'll find that I'm actually very shallow in a few areas. You interested in any of the DevNet certs that have come out, uh, Tommy? Uh, yeah, I would like to go into the, I haven't looked into them at all. Um, but I, I feel like there's probably some good competence in, in the techniques being taught and the kind of the principles. So I'd, I'd like to go after those too, I think. So that, that's the question that I have. Does it teach enough of those basics and those fundamentals and those principles or, the, or is when you get into an automation certification, is it getting so deep into a specific vendor's ecosystem and world and way of doing things that it's like, eh, I can't really apply too much of this to the broader world. I mean, because that was what Cisco certifications have been historically, right? A lot of us that are network professionals came up through the ranks that way. We did the CCNA and the CCNP and maybe the CCIE and along the way, yeah, some of it was Cisco specific, but by and large, it was about networking more broadly. Oddly. Now, as we get into the automation world, man, so many of the automation solutions are targeted at a specific vendor's ecosystem and way of doing things and what their APIs offer, what their tooling is that mm -hmm. they you know, kind of want you to do. So if you go down that road, are you kind of like, eh, I'd be locking in in a Cisco DevNet perspective, would I be locking into Cisco's view on automation? And it, it's kind of a different thing from back in the day, you take a Cisco cert and learn a lot of networking fundamentals um, that happen to you know, be really good for your Cisco stuff. I don't know. I mean, I feel like. Well, certifications I, I, are becoming more specialized, aren't they? I think we're becoming mm -hmm. more specialized. Is that a good thing? I don't Probably. think so, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I mean, mean, there's not a lot of room for everybody to be super specialized anymore because the other trend is we're all supposed to be generalists. We're all supposed to walk in and know something about mm. three different clouds at least and, uh, and and several different disciplines. And maybe we got a few things we're deeply knowledgeable about. But, uh, you know, if you spend all this time investing in specialized certs, is that a good or a bad thing? I mean, you, it's not... You, you used to be, you went down the Cisco cert ladder because, man, you could build your career on that. I mean, Tommy, you pointed out, you did ICND one, and that was good enough to just get you off and running, and off you went. You didn't even have to go and get the rest. You, you springboarded off of one exam. I think it's, and, and it's also it. speed as well, Ethan. I mean, look at when, when I, uh, there was this whole period from 2001 right through the 2000s to 2010 when nothing changed. It was all the same protocols, mm -hmm. the same hardware, the same, yeah. you know, same cables, same power. You know, I even got to the point where I could memorize all the different power cables and things. But the pace of change that's picked up from 2010 and going into 2020, we're already talking about SD-WAN and in a good SD-WAN environment, you may not need to know OSPF to the depth that you know that you needed to 10 years ago. Take for example, uh, people who work on Meraki, they don't really need to know a whole lot about OSPF because Meraki doesn't implement any of the features, any of the funky features. So if you're not, if they're not even in the products anymore, do you really need to know what an OSPF area is? And, and how much longer do we need oh to support those my. technology? Do we really <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> well, Russ, this goes back to what you were just saying, you know, specialist versus generalist. And, and is it wise to become you know, overly specialized? I don't know. I mean, I don't know many race car drivers who don't know how the race car works. 
I think we 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 tend to think that because we have a pretty CLI or a pretty way of doing uh, automation that we don't need to know how it works anymore, how to design it anymore. I just don't agree with that. I think in the long run, that's going to bite us in the butt. Well, there's a difference between being a push button operator that can check boxes and, you know, magic's supposed to George happen. Jetson. And if the magic doesn't happen, yeah, then, then, <laughs> then you call TAC and say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to fly my spaceship and uh, anyway, something's not working. Can you help me out? I, I think the interesting you, things about cloud platforms is that when you contact the vendor for tech support, everything's in their cloud and they can actually see more about your network than you do. And so they can actually fix you. There's a, there's a transition here. In the old days, vendors had to rely on what you told them. So the customer had to be smart and intelligent and know what was going on. But increasingly with SD-WAN controllers and, you know, uh, ACI controllers that report home to the head office, um, you know, into some sort of cloud platform, they know they can reach out and configure the system, provided you give them permission in theory, uh, and, and tell you what's going wrong a lot of the time. You know, those of you that are out there in, in reseller land dealing with customers and so on, um, the Cisco still at the stranglehold on the market such that if you get a Cisco certification, that's your ticket. I, my opinion is not as much anymore and trending less, but there's still lots of folks that are aligned with Cisco. So particularly if you work for a reseller, you can do awfully good. But if you're just a person working for an enterprise, does having a Cisco cert, is it all that meaningful like it used to be? You know, the salary numbers would suggest that once upon a time, the CCAE was like the thing. You went and got that and you made the most money you could write your ticket. It's not so true anymore. That's all kind of moved over to cloud and stuff. So you know, what's my motivation to go down the new Cisco track, I guess? Uh, I, To be honest, um, I haven't really put that much rigor into the thought on it. I, I feel like you know, it's more like a rite of passage thing for me at this point. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to do it because there's, there's definitely a discipline to learning it and labbing it and going through. And I know that going through that process is going to make a few things that I don't have in my tool belt stick, um, from the development standpoint, you know, I've done a few Python courses and I've learned a lot. And then when I've gone from that and gone back to do PowerShell, like what used to take me a thousand lines takes 250 now. So like things starting to stick and I, and I'm hopefully when I get to looking at the blueprints, those, those things are definitely there. Um, one point I will make though, right. You were talking about, is it, is it a ticket? And you talked you mentioned like the salary things. What I will say is the demand is still there. So mm. there are a ton of organizations coming up on massive refreshes of equipment in the field. Lots of folks who've held on to things five to seven years. And regardless of whether or not they just go to Cisco and pick the next 2950 or 3750 version switch or whatever they put into their campus stacks or wherever, um, there is a competence required to implement and it can we sometimes we struggle to find folks who aren't going to cause a full site outage trying to you know upgrade a closet at campus and so there's plenty and, of work and you're talking done. about just just networking knowledge you know, oh yeah routing like switching just fundamentals make, just making sure that you know you understand that yes we're still running spanning tree and we still you can't just do that that way making sure because otherwise, you know, if you push the work down to true just level ones, right, then you, you're in for a world of hurt. So like when my group scopes uh, implementations, we still put a very senior architect at the helm and some almost like someone at the CCMP level, just above the guys turning the wrenches and ripping the cables out. Because if we don't, it's just pain. It's so much pain. And uh, if you go into the data center with that came, same kind of mindset, you, the pain just amplifies. So I, I still think there's plenty of work to be done. The longevity of employment, I don't know. Like that's slowly gonna, there's still a level of competency required. So I, I think the, the low hanging fruits are gonna start to dwindle, but um, folks will- And you underscored there. Russ's point you know, nicely, you know, the fundamentals are still required. Networking is still networking and activity is still connectivity. We've layered all this crap on top. We've added automation, which is not a solution. It's tooling um, that helps us with the solution, which is building a network. Uh, you know, and those are different things. You know, automation is, uh, you know, something that is, is, helps us get to the end game. But it is, if you can't be an automation expert and not understand what it is you're automating. So, mm -hmm. and I know, Russ, I'm echoing things that you've written about uh, you know, at some length. Oh, 5,868 times or 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying that there's no need for skilled engineers, but increasingly I'm of the view that the old days of the I-shaped engineer, who was a deep specialist in a specific thing, like a, there were engineers who were service provider specialists or enterprise data center or enterprise campus, right? Whereas we're moving much more to a, a T-shaped where you might be particularly skilled in the data center, but that's not as deep because you're also now doing campus and wireless and some data center and some WAN, and you're probably doing something in the cloud as well. And you're not going to be able to find time to do the deep discipline stuff. And what will happen is over time, as you get more and wider and wider, you're not going to have the, the motivation to get deep on anything because by the time you get deep on the arcane, um, things around a per VLAN spanning tree using rapid spanning tree to spanning tree, my integration, you're already up in the, in the AWS cloud trying to work out how to do a VPC and configure, uh, you know, whatever it is that's going on. I don't, I, I think there's a transition here where um, the days of being specialized in a single vendor's equipment are, is passing away and you're more likely to work in a multi-platform environment. So you might work on ACI in the data center, but you might have a different SD-WAN strategy, but you might have a different campus strategy, and you're going to spend most of your life in the SDN. You're not going to spend your life at a CLI speaking some arcane language. There's a transition. That's not to say that there'll be no certification. I think it'll be a different form of certification to what you see today, and the vendors have been very slow to change. Well, I, I think but the problem that you're pointing out there, though, Greg, is that I don't think that obliviates the need for the fundamentals. Like from my perspective, the way I've always seen it is I can move off Juniper to Cisco or Cisco to Juniper or Juniper to Arista because I know the right questions to ask because I understand yeah. how BGP works, right? I know what to interrogate to find what I need to do. Now there may be some arcane feature I don't know, right? If somebody asks me, well, you know, how do you configure this on that particular box? I'm always like, dude, it's called a search engine, right? <laughs> I don't really care. That's not the point. The point is, can you describe to me how OSPF converges on this topology? And what happens if you do these area boundaries or if you do aggregation versus summarization? If I understand those things, I don't really need to care so much about the CLI anyway. So I think what I'm afraid of, though, is I'm afraid we're going the opposite direction, which is it's literally just a push button. I don't even yeah. know how OSPF works. Yeah, no, that's not. Yeah, yeah, that's. I agree with you. I, my point is, is though that when I was studying for the CCIE, part of it was keyboard speed, how fast you could type those oh, commands. Yeah, in, definitely. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's not. A, that is no longer a skill. What you really want to be able to do is, can you tell me why um, yeah. OSPF to EIGRP redistribution is a bad idea, or you know how MPLS EVPN, whatever it is that's, that's the latest thing that, that they would put into a, in a certification. And, right. that, and the, that's a massive transition between then and now. Yep, exactly. And I agree the certifications haven't followed there. I, I, I'm playing with stuff in this area, but I don't want to say much more. I've been talking about it for a while. Hmm. <laughs> so Meg, I don't know that we answered the question very well for you, but because it's not as it's not the slam dunk it once was to just go do whatever Cisco certs there are and, you know, your career will follow. It's just, it's a more complicated question in today's environment. So well, you can ask me again in a year. And if I have more bags under my eyes or I'm, you know, drinking <laughs> beer instead of coffee at 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll, we'll see what's up. <laughs>